from all of you good workers, good news to you I'll tell of how the good old union has come in here to dwell. Then um, Sir here's going to tell us about the culture war and how they would win it. By the way, I have already watched this video because I already recorded this video by having not messed with my, you know, any of my audio equipment in probably about half a year at this point. The audio was borked, so I sound like a fucking robot screaming at my fucking computer. So we're not going to use that one. I might chop it up for shorts because it does sound kind of funny. Although completely incomprehensible. But he's, he's only got four minutes of this, which is funny because, you know, clearly there's not a lot of thoughts here. Then again, it's Sarah. She doesn't have a lot of thoughts. She makes, you know, space seem very filled is what I'm saying. Also, I, I refuse to use their real name because there's no way they have shot down six aircraft in a single fight. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. They have not done it yet. They have not earned that right, to that name. And to add to that, neither has the F-22. <laughs> It'll never shoot down an aircraft. It'll never be used. It'll be, an, it'll be the plane, perfectly designed to fuck shit up, and it will never get to fuck anything up. It is. The man who has gone through a 30-year dry streak that will never know the witness of a vagina at this point, and I love it. Hello everyone, Ace here, and today I've decided to talk a little bit more about the culture wars, and more specifically how I believe we can win them against the far left. Alright, and already we're up to a point where it makes no sense whatsoever. You do not win the culture war. It is bullshit. It is a fabrication, a great smokescreen because politicians don't want to fix anything or can't fix something. So what they do is they'll use some culture war issue. It used to be like satanic panic shit where they would side with the church and be like, oh, D&D &D and video games, they're satanic, they're evil, they're bad. We know your wages are starting to tank. Don't question us about that. No, no, no. It's the satanic panic. That's the thing you need to worry about. And they would focus on that so you would forget that they have, you know, basically fucked you over. Um, it was the Mexicans for a while, the Muslims for a bit. It, it, it kind of just bounced around between groups of people who aren't really a threat, but they can make them seem like this great big boogeyman to white people. And that's kind of what the culture war is. Um, it's moved on to, like, trans people now. Give it another year or two, it'll be somebody else. You know, they're, they're doing all this, like, fire and brimstone, like, oh, they're, they're evil, satanic, groomer, pedophile, trans, communist, socialist, whatever. But in about a year or two, people will stop giving a fuck. Because you can only scare somebody with a boogeyman for so long before they stop caring. And they'll move on to somebody else. Uh, my money's on black people or brown people being the target again. <laughs> because that seems to be the default. Like, oh, uh, look at the border. Look how scary the border is. Brown people. Isn't that terrifying, white people? And you now care about the border again when... I mean, you can name on, your, you can name on one hand the amount of articles that have come out about that southern border over the past three years. Because, you know, it's moved on from that to, like, trans people being bad. It, it's not winnable. It's bullshit. It, it, 3,000 years in the future from now, there'll still be a culture war. They'll still be arguing over something. All oh, these kids these days, this new satanic blood drinker cult that want to use the new medicine we've created to transform themselves into wolves. They're, they're destroying Western society now. We need to destroy them before they destroy it. It'll be that shit next, all right? It, it'll be that like that, all right? It, it, go back in time to the ancient times of the Romans, and they had this kind of bullshit. It's, it's, it's a bunch... It's bullshit. It means nothing. There's no winning this culture war. It just, it just moves to a different fucking playground. That's it. It's playground bullshit... And when this is over, they find somebody else to use as a smokescreen because they don't want to fix anything because the status quo um, suits the politicians and the big CEOs so much. Then why fix it? It works well for them. They're making all the money in the world. They're fucking you over. I mean, they got theirs. Fuck you. And they're going to pay the politicians to never fix anything because if they fix something, well, then they have to pay you proper wages. They have to give you benefits maybe free health care, and that would cost them money, money out their pockets from lobbying and, um, you know, insurance companies especially with the health care thing. That's all, this, that's all this is. There's not really a war going on. Like, you're not really a soldier fighting. You're just some LARPy weirdo on the Internet. 
from like a very small section of the far right that nobody cares about. Like I've seen other conservatives make fun of this guy and his friends because they're just that stupid. Now this is in fact, I've gotten several comments on videos where I talk about it. One guy even apologized, like, oh, man, I'm sorry I was like that. That, that guy was fucking insane. And then he went on to, like, he, he tried to accuse, you know, me of being a communist because I said it was bad to just be bigoted against fucking, what was it, gay people or something? I, I can't remember. It was fucking years ago. Right after I covered this guy, and he was like, I'm sorry I was like that. And then he, like, apologized and walked away. He said he's done with politics. You know, because at some point you grow up and realize, oh, this stuff is bullshit. Or you drink all the Kool-Aid in the world and you become, you know, a fucking far-right weirdo. This is going to be... And spend all, all, your, all your years in your basement cowering in fear of the great other that the news and your political commissars have warned you about that are coming to get you, but have never seemed to appear. Very weird response to a point that kibbles from the bickering bunch has brought up recently which is itself in response to the i love this by the way 18 likes so you know we're talking big names here big big names um i'd like to point out by the way when i had a social media account and i mean both twitter facebook at one point i even had a, a parlor account i got more likes than this guy does not, not to flex, but I'm kind of flexing. I got more likes than this guy usually did. The whole pick me cancellation. Basically, Kibbs believes this is continuing to happen because people aren't creating their own media enough and are simply virtual. Ironically, this person kind of gets it. Nothing will ever change because that's what the culture war is. It's a bunch of bullshit. It's a big circular track. You're not supposed to deviate from that. It's your holding pattern. Because you refuse to actually acknowledge that there are problems that need fixing outside of the big boogeyman that some politician created to scare you. Virtue signaling in his eyes. Now, I do typically like Kibbs' work, although I do have to critique him here. As people have already been creating their own media for quite a while. Including media from people that openly reject wokeness. Look at Kingdom Come Deliverance from 2018 as just one popular example. And... Yeah, that game that everybody liked, and then they saw that the um, creator was actually posting a racist bullshit and attacking people who criticized him. And they went, oh, well, we're not going to buy your game anymore, and they stopped buying it. <laughs> While I do believe... Like that guy, um, Domina, or whatever the fuck it was. Like, people liked that game, but then the guy started putting, like, alpha male, COVID conspiracies, and just pickup artist bullshit. He got into a fight with Sterling, and Sterling rocked his shit. And then he, it just tanked. He tanked the whole thing. He got banned from his own forums and everything. And then he, um, oh, if you guys want to see the kind of idiots we're dealing with, actual Jake, you know, the corncob guy, he actually debated this guy. They had, a, like, I think it was, like, two hours long or something conversation. And that guy was literally fucking insane. Holy shit. Like, he was fucking insane. I, I watched the whole thing. I listened to it at work. He, he, he's out of his goddamn mind. Like, it, it is a fucking trip and a half. I highly suggest you go watch it, because Jake had no idea who this guy was. And when he found out at the end, it was like a, it was a bit funny shit in the world. Just, if you got time, go watch it, or listen to it, or whatever, if, if you're doing something else. It's well worth it, because it, it is kind of fucking hilarious to watch this guy, you know, basically roll up, trying to be like the big mean dude. Like, oh yeah, I'm super gonna wreck you, bro. And then when he confronts Jake, Jake just kind of like, Blows him the fuck out of the water. <laughs> that Kibbs is at least partially correct in that we do need to create our own media, even though we already kind of are. You know, like Parler, Rumbler, Odyssey, um, Truth Social. You know, there's dating apps that they made that tanked. All these things have tanked or not gone anywhere because nobody cares and nobody likes these right-wing weirdos. <laughs> oh, and, you know, Twitter, which is super right-wing and totally isn't failing right now. And to the point where Elon Musk is refusing to pay his bills and had to force people to pay him more money to do certain things that used to be free because a lot of his advertisers bailed the moment he started letting people post CP and say racial slurs under every post everywhere when he took over. Not to mention he also fired most of his staff who went elsewhere. Doing well, guys, building your own spaces. <laughs> Uh, fuck you, I'm going to make my own space with Flapjack and hookers. And then the space they built was a cardboard box beneath the Bay Bridge that nobody showed up to. 
are. And gatekeeping that media, even though we again kind of already are, I do not believe that it is the sole. Oh, yeah, here's the thing with the gatekeeping thing. They literally can't stop you from participating. They can't. They can't stop you at all. If you want to get into a hobby or media, you can. They can't stop you. What are they going to do? Come to your house and slap the fucking remote out of your hands for watching something? Take your computer? Are they going to follow you around in the game shop, stopping you from picking up models? No, because they'd get kicked the fuck out of that game store. Because that's costing the game owner money. And he can't run the shop if he's not making money because these guys are trying to threaten people out of the shop. Believe me, I've seen this kind of shit happen where somebody tries to, like, harass and gatekeep people out of a game shop, and they get banned. Because it costs them money. If everybody hears that some weirdo is in there shouting and screaming at people to stop buying models, you think anybody's going to go to that game shop? No. They're not going to show up for D&D Night or play Warhammer or Battletech or whatever. No. They're going to they're gonna go somewhere else where, you know, they're allowed to play. And you can't sustain a business on um, legacy um, customers. It, it, it doesn't work that way. You need to have some kind of growth to pay your bills, to buy new product, to expand into other product um, IPs. Y you can't sustain yourself on three weirdos who chased away... You know all their all the new customers and their families and shit because they would not stop screaming at them about how this IP is theirs and theirs alone. Like they can't do it. Like just ignore these idiots. If they harass you in a store, let the management know. They'll usually tell them to get the fuck out. Like nobody can stop you. These guys have failed every time they say we're gatekeeping this thing, and then they failed utterly because normal people don't care and most people don't like their ideology answer to this problem. Where I believe that Kibbs is completely incorrect is in his claim that Marxists are emotionless. For while they might not necessarily care about the media itself, there are two th It's true. They have no emotions. It's why you see people on Tumblr crying about their Roombas getting stepped on or something. <laughs> By the way, I am on Tumblr now. <laughs> because, you know, I feel kinship with the weirdos there. It's very sad, actually. I am definitely fucked up in the head somewhere. <laughs> Just a bunch of weirdos shouting at each other through thin walls. ...things that every Marxist does care about. Their own public image and the image of their ideology. And I believe that this is ultimately going to be just as important a component to winning the culture war as creating our own media. If not even... You ready for the great evil, evil Dark Lord speech? It's coming. And more so, as eventually we are going to have to retake the ground that we have lost. Star Wars is going to have to be reclaimed. For <laughs> if I ever get this LARPy, fucking shoot me in the head. Just take me out back and shoot me. This is pathetic. Oh, we're going to have to retake this lost ground. You're not a soldier. This isn't really a war. Stop acting this LARPy. From these people. Which is why I am completely against the idea of abandoning fandoms when the creators of those IPs become woke. Basically what I'm saying is while you shouldn't support woke creators, you should remain in the fandom and remain as a thorn in their side at all times. But let's- Yes. Make sure everybody hates you in that fandom because you won't shut the fuck up and let them enjoy the fandom. That's, that's totally a way to make people hate you. It's totally gonna work for you. Let's now move on to how I really think we're going to win the culture war. And it's going to be by making the Marxists as socially stigmatized as their national socialist and fascist cousins. Alright, now the whole time he's talking, I want you to imagine some like 90 pound pale white dude with no hair hunched over his computer desk, rubbing his hands together, foaming out of the mouth, and saying what he's saying. Because it makes a lot more sense when you just imagine him as some like basement gremlin weirdo. Make the general public hate the Marxists. Make it as widely known in the public as possible that Marxism is an ontologically evil ideology, unworthy of even the most basic of respect. And thankfully, this is very- Now keep in mind, he thinks Biden is a Marxist too. So when he says Marxist, he means anybody who's left of right wing easy to do when we can constantly get the Marxists to admit that they are pro-rape advocates, as demonstrated in, for example, the super straight controversy. And doing the- Yeah, the super straight controversy, that op from fucking Reddit, <laughs> that was proven to be an op, where a bunch of people called, said, oh, I'm super straight, and then they went onto trans accounts and said, I wouldn't even fuck you. And the trans people were like, I don't want to have sex with you anyway. And they got mad and started screaming at the trans people like, you're a bigot for not wanting to have sex with me. Nobody cares. 
you just kind of announced that you'll never have sex ever in your life and then got mad when somebody made fun of you for it. That's what that whole thing was. It wasn't even a controversy. It was just a bunch of weirdos screaming. And then when we made fun of them for being weirdos that scream, they got mad and started calling us bigots for some reason. It was it was fucking... I've never seen one of these guys actually debate the super straight thing, and it proved them right in any way. They usually just, like, cower or run away from it because they know they have no legs to stand on. I think one of them even took a swing at Bosch, and it, like, bailed utterly. Like, he came off like a big fucking joke to the point where um the moderator even started laughing at him. Yeah, because I think I remember seeing it in the highlight um, video years ago when it happened where... um. The moderator literally fucking choked on his coffee or something. This attacks the two things that, as we have mentioned, the Marxist cares about. For we are using their own public image to smear their ideology as a whole. And what I, I don't think this guy knows any Marxists. They don't care about the public image. These are the LARPy guys who walk around with, like, different colored hair and really weird clothing to be alternative. They don't care. They don't care what you think of them. All kids may consider this to be virtue signaling. It has, I can safely say, produced results. Results? No, it hasn't. He's going to say, like, he totally did it, and he totally won victories against the, the great left-wing horde, and then it's just him just, like, talking about one dude and how he totally owns every left hard he talks to, which he doesn't. He just kind of yells at them, and they go, oh... So you're an insane person then, and they kind of walk away, and then he, like, declares victory because they walked away from a screaming insane person. Because he did this to me, too. Like, he came onto my channel screaming and hollering. He got debated by me and, like, two other people, and then he just kind of stopped. And then he totally swore he, like, debated me and proved I was... A bunch of different... Th it's like, you didn't, though. You just kind of came at us, yelled at us, and then you left, and then we just kind of made fun of you after you left. Like, you never proved a point. In fact, you got proven wrong on several points by me and several other people, and then you just kind of walked away. Like, you stopped engaging. You just kind of repeated yourself a couple of times, and then you just walked away. You accused me of being a Marine at one point, which was weird. I don't know why you said that. That was that was odd. You compared yourself to Rosa Parks at one point, which was also kind of fucking weird. And then he just kind of like, I I walked away because I didn't want to stop. I stopped caring, and we just stopped talking to him. He he left, declared victory, and left. It it was weird. It was the weirdest fucking exchange I've ever seen on my channel. And I have shit like this on my channel constantly. <laughs> Keep in mind. And he is easily the weirdest motherfucker. Hands down, the weirdest motherfucker. That I might not have actually expected, but results nevertheless. For example, I've seen people completely abandon the internet altogether when I gave them that little bit of extra attention in the form of a community post showing how they're a rape lover. A good example of this is... So I want you to take a look at this, right? You can pause the video here. It, you're not going to miss much. And, like, read what is said here. Keep in mind, at no point did he admit to anything. And at no point... Was anything really said that proved Ace right? Now, why I don't agree with everything said here. He did not say anything that Ace said he did. He just kind of like, he's a, Ace is like a drunk. He has selective hearing and reading. He doesn't see or hear what you say. He sees and hears what he wants you to, he, wants you, wants you to say and what he wants to hear. And he's done this in his community post a few times. Because I looked at those before I watched this video. Where he'll like, oh, this person admits to this, and then he'll highlight what they said, and they did not say what he said they said. It's it's very weird. It's like he doesn't seem to understand that he's not actually proven anything. And if you actually take 10 seconds to actually read what was written, it's like, oh, they didn't actually say that. They said this other thing, and Ace just kind of ignored it. It's probably why this guy doesn't really have a lot of traction in the political sphere. Like, nobody seems to give a shit what this guy says. And again, conservatives also don't really care what he has to say because he just comes off like a weirdo. This is James O'Byrne. Also, his coffee analogy is dumb. It, do it doesn't mean what he thinks it does. Who actually deleted his entire YouTube channel. From what I can recall, by the way, he had thousands of subs at the time that he did that. Not a result that I called for or even anticipated, but definitely a result. Another case has... By the way, I have found no evidence that he did delete his channel because of Ace. 
In fact, from what I can find, he deleted the channel weeks after that exchange, from what I can find out. So it probably wasn't because of Ace. ...to be Opera Falcon, who changed his profile name and pick to Singing Bull, to try to hide when he tried to downplay all the cases that I have posted in the past of people advocating for rape that happened to all be Marxists. His... Yeah, this is also funny. Like, imagine that this is the level of stability you're at. Somebody says something, and then you just do this. Also, this is not what gaslighting is. <laughs> also, how do you know what this guy's ideology is? He just doesn't agree with you. Everybody who doesn't agree with Ace is like a communist, socialist, fascist, Nazi, um, liberal. Like, anybody who doesn't agree with him is like the ideology. And he's going to show this guy's channel here in a second. He's not political that much. And by the way, this guy's spot on. I don't know. I think you're misleading people and assuming too much. And then this channel's like, you're okay with the Holocaust and rape. Like, yeah, this is basically what happens when you talk to Ace and don't agree with him. Now, if you kiss his ass, he's civil to you. But the moment you don't agree with him, he gets triggered and, like, yells at you. Marxists. His channel is still up, but the fact that he has still tried to act... So, you know... Small channel. He's rebranded more than once. There's the app. So he's rebranded more than once. Not a lot of subscribers. Not a lot of views on his videos. He doesn't do political content. He's not hiding from you. So I don't know what point he's trying to prove here. I mean, this doesn't prove what Ace is saying is true. It's like Ace thinks he won a victory and like is trying to say... He, he's like the Russians at this point. Like, ha, we totally destroyed Ukraine's army. And then Ukraine's army is, like, just there still. <laughs> Ace is like Russia. <laughs> just as pathetic. Um, like, this doesn't really prove anything. It just shows that a small YouTube channel rebranded. Which could happen for a thousand different reasons. I rebranded, like, six times before I settled on the one I'm using now. No, wait. Eight times. Because I changed it, like, I changed it... What was it, like, four times? And I landed on that, um, the one that I had when I first started doing political commentary. And then I changed that because that was hard to type in and pronounce. So I changed that because people were struggling with it. And then I changed it again because the one I was using is like a suicide joke. And people were starting to get annoyed with me about it. They were pointing out, that's kind of messed up. And I'm like, fair enough. And I changed it. So that's not really that uncommon. A lot of YouTubers change their handles and stuff. To say that it's because of you is pretty narcissistic. Then again, this entire channel is just him being narcissistic. So, not that much of a surprise. Really ...hide from that. Yeah, Shows that the guy who, like, makes videos on, you know, Sterling and acts like he totally destroyed Sterling's career. And, like, I don't even think Sterling knows who this guy is. The community post definitely had an effect on him. An effect that he, by the way, completely deserves. I can also point to the whole grooming rhetoric and how... Also, um, cancel culture is okay when Ace does it, apparently. I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. It's okay when he does it. Very interesting. That works in this exact same manner as well against the Marxists. Although I do believe... You know, if Ace cares so much about grooming and um, protecting kids, why hasn't he made any videos on, like, the church? You know, the Catholic church, the Christian church. Why has he done videos on them? You know, the biggest organizations in the world that have done this stuff. In fact, a scandal dropped less than a year ago. More young nuns and priests being sex trafficked by the Catholic Church in Europe. They busted it down, and the priests in charge were protected again by the church. Isn't it odd how these people totally care about children, but don't care enough to actually give a fuck about the massive, massive mega corporation in the Catholic Church that has been protecting these people for decades, if not centuries, and just keeps getting caught doing these massive operations of, you know, child sex trafficking. It's very weird. It's almost like they don't care. And that it's all just a big virtue signal so they can attack, you know, people they don't like politically and just accuse them of shit. Anyway, I just, I just find it weird that they never do that. They never target the church. It's very weird. It's just, I'm just saying. Because, you know, I've made videos on the church before. I've mentioned them a lot of times. I actually showed the article of the bust at one point. And by the way, that video got hit for hate speech and harassment. Because Catholics get butt hurt whenever you talk about it. 
believe the fact that the Marxists are trying to pawn off the blame to other groups makes it all the more necessary that we have to emphasize the fact that it is the Marxists specifically who are groomers. But my ultimate point here is that the culture war is going to be won when the Marxists become every much as stigmatized as the National Socialists or the Fascists. And the way we do that is to simply use the arguments and philosophical writings of the Marxists against them. With all of that said, I do of course welcome Kit. Given I've seen this guy try and use the writings of Marx against Marxists before, he probably shouldn't be doing that, because he failed fucking hard. ...from the bickering bunch to provide his own thoughts on this matter, if he should so desire. And I am curious to see what he has to ultimately say. But in any case, this has been Ace. Then again, that's assuming that Ace can actually read, which... To be clear, I'm not sure he can. Again, he seems very selective on what he can actually comprehend and what he can't. Anyway... Before we stop this whole fucking charade, I'd like to point out a comment I saw in his video of this guy who ruined a D and D campaign because he wanted to be an asshole and become a what's known as that guy in the community. Where instead of just playing along and having fun, he decided to just ruin the campaign for everybody involved, start yelling at them, push his own politics, and force them to Google stuff because he got mad. Instead of just being, oh, it's a meme. I'll play along and have fun with it. Because that's the level of snowflaker we see from these guys. They, they honestly cannot exist where fun is to be had. Unless that fun is them telling anti-Semitic jokes, weirdly. Like, seriously, every time I've talked to one of these guys, they've accused me of being a Jew. It's very weird. I'm not. I'm a Christian, by the way. <laughs> Which, depending on how you define religion, is not really that much of a division, but... I'm not one, you know. There is there is an ethnic level to this. I'm not that. I'm white. But it's um, it's you know, I just find it very funny that these guys will be the first to shout that you need to keep politics out of our games, and then they'll just shove their politics in your face, and like ruin games because they're butt hurt over a meme. And by the way, if I was in that game, I would not do what this guy did. I would play along, but I would be like a merchant and like fuck with the guy. Constantly. Like, take the piss out of them, tell the jokes, have the fun, and they would probably put the fire back. That, that's how you do this. That's how you have fun. You don't, like, be an asshole and ruin a game because you're triggered, you weirdo.